Mirav Mikhaeli, congratulations on being the first labor leader since Shimon Peres in 1984 to win re-election. And one reason, I think, for that is that in recent years, many people have been uncertain what labor stands for. There's been a sort of identity crisis in the party. So what is your message going to be to voters this campaign of what they get if they vote labor? You're right, I think, that this is the main reason, that labor is rebuilding and renewing dramatically and is speaking loud and clear about its agenda, which is the Declaration of Independence of Israel. It's the basis of Zionism, a home for the Jewish people with equality for all its citizens, with um, security that relies not only on military and other kind of force, but on political and peace agreements with our neighbors. And of course, a constant strive for a just society with a fair economy. And these things are so relevant today more than ever. Israel has estrayed from Zionism and needs to go back to it. And that is why it's so essential to rebuild the Labour Party. And this is why I insisted on rebuilding the Labour Party. And thankfully, I think what we saw last night, other than the very heartening uh, vote of confidence that I have had the privilege of getting from the members of the party, is a choice that the party made in stability, in continuity, in choosing the future uh, and uh, choosing to uh, go back to looking afar with a very clear vision and working towards it. There are many people who feel that both the uh, Labor Party and the left-wing Merits Party would benefit if they joined forces uh, in this election, that, that the left itself would be stronger if they do so, that votes won't be wasted. What's your reaction to that? It's very interesting that fe people feel that way or think that way, but our experience proves very definitely that the opposite is true. Uh, every time that Meretz and Labour went together, it uh, led to the, a major decrease in the number of mandates that the two parties had. This is a horrible waste of social democratic, of uh, Zionist mandates that will um, go to lists that are not clear what they stand for. Actually, Gantz and Saar uh, have now become a very right-wing party. So giving votes to those lists instead of strengthening both Labour and Merit is a mistake, and it is a failure which I do not intend to repeat. If we could switch now to your role as transportation minister, uh, especially uh, overlooking air travel. Uh, first of all, uh, the bad news, of course, is the uh, uh, crowding and the problem with lost luggage continues at the Ben Gurion Airport. What's going to be done to deal with that? And some good news uh, in Saudi Arabia now permitting overflight of uh, Israeli flights uh, going to the uh, uh, east. How is that going to impact and benefit for Israeli travel? Travelers. Yes, well, the crisis in the airports is really something that we see everywhere. And it is due to um, the human quality of not believing that um, change can happen so rapidly. You know, it was a common, um, I think, understanding of everyone that it'll take the aviation um, branch to a long time to recover from the severe crisis it went through through uh, coronavirus. Uh, but it didn't. It went from zero to 100 in no time, and now everybody is struggling with it. So in Israel, uh, both the general director of the uh, ministry and myself are watching very closely, visiting the airport um, very often, and seeing the um, slow but constant improvement that we are making sure that happens in the airport. Uh, only today uh, we gave hand to the companies, to the, um, um, airway, uh, the airways to help them deal with the lost luggage. And we gave back 1,300 suitcases to their owners. It was a huge operation and it is part of the effort that we're doing in the airport. Of course, the Saudi um, uh, news is is very important to Israelis, and it's very heartening, and 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 it has, of course, a lot of impact beyond uh, aviation. But let's 
uh, focus on aviation. So for Israelis, this is an opportunity to fly to many, many uh, places in the world in less time, paying less money, and feeling that they are part of the world more than they have been before. Uh, I am, as a chair of labor, especially uh, one that hopes that we can, in the future, take this uh, little step forward in the sense that uh, we need to leverage it and to make it into a dialogue that will help us work out a solution for the most strategic thing that Israel should deal with, and this is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I am a big believer in the Arab League Peace Initiative and some accord that should be um, inspired by this initiative that is now 20 years old and was originated actually in Saudi Arabia. And I think this is what Israel should work towards, finding out a way to have a regional solution that it will include an Israeli-Palestinian conflict kind of solution. Now, also, as you, you've discussed the importance of the Palestinian issue to you and your party, you're actually involved in one uh, issue to ease uh, conditions for Palestinians, and that is opening the Allenby Bridge passage between Israel and Jordan for Palestinians to extend its opening hours even to 24 hours a day. Uh, you've been working on that with uh, Morocco, for example. Tell us how, where that stands right now. So first of all, um, when I became the Minister of Transportation, I immediately declared that I'm going to use everything in my power to strengthen and strengthen and enhance the relationship with our immediate partners, um, which are Jordan and Egypt. And so first and foremost, we really uh, took the hours of the crossings between Jordan and uh, Israel and between Egypt and Israel back to the hours they were operating before COVID. And Allenby, of course, the Allenby crossing needs a special effort. Now, the whole manpower challenge is something that we all know from all of uh, life arenas at the moment, and it requires still a big effort on this end. But at the same time, we were able, thanks to a lot of um, uh, goodwill from the Moroccan king, his highness, and, um, of course, his government, with the Jordanians and the Palestinians, we sat together for many times to find out how do we overcome whatever hardships, whatever obstacles there, there, there were, uh, to reoperating Allenby Crossing 24-7. Uh, so uh, we did figure it out. Now what's left is really to get all the manpower that's needed to make it happen, and I'm sure it'll happen soon. Transportation minister and still chairperson of the Labor Party, Mirav Mikhaeli. Thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you, Kalev. Have a great day.